Welcome. Let's talk about forced oscillations and resonance. Uh, this balloon here, as it goes back and forth in simple harmonic motion, doesn't go forever because it is damped. And one thing we're going to talk about is dampening. We're also going to talk about how you can force things to oscillate uh, and then make them resonate, which makes them vibrate like crazy. Let's go. Now, here I've got an oscillator that if it were undamped in a perfect world, it would just keep oscillating forever and ever back and forth. And it would look like this graph up here with the same amplitudes. But in reality, if I just let it go, it eventually stops and I get kind of sad. And it would look like this damped system here, which would be what we call underdamped. And it's underdamped because it goes through the equilibrium point however many times, but eventually the damping steals the energy and decreases your amplitudes. Although you might have another device, like this thing that gets on doors, that allows it not to swing back through equilibrium, but to just go straight through it. And while under damping is whenever it goes through the equilibrium at all, you could have over damping, or you could have critical damping. Over damping is really slow to return back to equilibrium, whereas critical damping gets back there in the shortest possible time possible. Now, these situations might be good for different times. Uh, if you have the, a car, you don't want your car on shock absorbers to continue oscillating and under damp. You get kind of seasick in your car. So instead, you might want critical damping or maybe over damping on something like a door. Many objects that are light or hollow will tend to vibrate pretty well, such as a wine glass, and it tends to have its natural frequency, which is the frequency it tends to vibrate quite well at. Uh, so I'm just drag that on there. The natural frequency is what an object tends to vibrate at. But you can also force things to vibrate at many oscillations. For example, the strings on a guitar here, each string, based on its tension, has a natural frequency. But when you pluck that string, it will make the whole guitar body and force it to vibrate at that particular frequency. Same thing with a speaker here. It's just a cone of usually cardboard or plastic, and you hook some electromagnetic coils up to it, and those coils, when they vibrate near a magnet, they force the cardboard to vibrate the frequency that they are vibrating at. Technically, I can force this wine glass to vibrate at any number of frequencies. Based, It's got its own natural frequency, though. And if I make it vibrate at a lower frequency, blah, it's probably not going to vibrate very much. Or higher than its frequency, blah, maybe not too much as well. But if I could make the forced oscillations from my voice be the same as the natural frequency, which I can't do, but let's say I could, then it would go crazy. And theoretically, it can be done. You can watch it on YouTube, uh, Mythbusters, uh, where they get an opera singer or a rock singer who has a really powerful voice who can match the frequency of this glass, and the amplitudes go crazy. And what that graph looks like if F sub zero here is your natural frequency, let's make this bigger. F sub zero is your natural frequency. If you then have lower ones, not much, higher ones, not much, but the vibrations will go crazy in amplitude if you match the forced frequency or the forced oscillations with the natural oscillations. And that is what we mean by resonance when the driving frequencies match the natural frequencies of a particular object, you get then massive oscillations. And that's also what's happening in musical instruments. A trombone, for example, it, well actually, let's come up with the next slide. A trombone here, um, by changing its length, it's changing its natural frequency, and it's going to select one of the driving frequencies coming from your lips, and that's going to have resonance in the trombone. If you want to resonate at higher frequencies from your lips, you shorten the trombone, and then it resonates at a 
uh, higher frequency. Now also you have the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Disaster, often cited as an example of resonance, where theoretically the uh, winds were coming through and they were fluctuating over the bridge and the frequency of their fluctuations matched the natural frequency that the bridge oscillated well at. And then the bridge started oscillating like crazy, it broke, and engineers got fired left and right. No one died though. Uh, and if you haven't looked that up on YouTube, uh, you are doing yourself a disservice. And if your physics teacher hasn't showed that to you uh, or directed you that way, it's probably because he doesn't love you. Check that one out. Uh, and so you want to avoid, they'll often uh, talk about how marching soldiers are supposed to uh, not be marching in step over a bridge in case they match the natural frequency of a bridge. That probably has never really destroyed any bridges. There's another Mythbusters on that. You can look that up as well. But technically, you probably do want to avoid having bridges get shaken apart by uh, resonance.